Hello, it's Katie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I've been asked a lot to um, show how to make earring findings, which I have done in a few of my videos, but this video is dedicated to four types of earring findings. So they're all ones that could come in handy. So we've got some nice long drop ones here, so kind of the dramatic drop, and different ways to attach as well. And I quite like the round ones because it gives a different design aspect to them so we're going to go through this is more your standard so this is like your standard classic hook design so we're going to go through that one then we're going to go through the rounded one which is quite nice and it, like i say it gives you kind of a different look uh, then we're going to go through this one which is a wrapped one which means that this doesn't open so this little loop at the front doesn't open so I'll show you there so you've got the design feature of having that loop at the front and then you can add things to that loop and then it's got kind of the classic shaped back and we've got the uh, the kind of more dramatic one the um, kind of whalebone shaped one or lemon shaped one if you laid it on, the, lay it on its side um, and there you can put kind of the bigger drop and some kind of more dramatic look on those. And you can also, if you checked out my video yesterday, I will put a link up at the top for this one. And um, it, we macrame down the front of these, so it gives you a different look. And that earring finding is very, very slightly different at the bottom there. So you could use either. So what we're going to use is, I chose to use only 0 0.8 wire. So that's all I've used and I've actually, I will briefly go through it, but I won't go through it, it with a demonstration of, I've not used any head pins at all. I've only used 0.8 wire, which I've actually used it all on this reel. Not the whole reel, it wasn't a full reel to start with. So I'm just going to move some of these to one side and we're going to get started. So we're going to be using quite a few different tools variations just to get different shapes and such so we've got our trusty six step bailing pliers we've got chain nose pliers we've got our flush cutters round nose pliers i'm also going to be using some of the bigger bailing pliers but you can use different sorts of mandrels you can find around the home and i'm going to be using my wire forming pliers which i also call nom nom pliers okay so we're going to start with the, these basic ones to start with. I'm just going to move some of these toes to one side just for a second. Make myself a bit of space. So I've got probably about three and a half, four inches of 0.8 wire. And what I want to do is make sure that they are flush cut on the end. So we're just going to take off, keeping the flush side of our snips closest to us the ends and make sure that we're flush cut. So we're going to be using different sides of our mandrels here. So I'm going to use the smallest one and the next smallest one. So I'm going to pop my pliers in right on the very tip, keeping them together. Always make earrings in tandem wherever I can, so at the same time. So I'm going to start turning this and turn a loop on the end. So we've got one loop fully around and back towards the wire so it's actually touching the wire again okay now i'm going to take my pliers off there so just take them off gently like so and then what i'm going to do is i want to turn this up the other way so i'm going to pop these back on so that it's right up to that loop but this time i'm going to use a slightly larger mandrel on this side i'm going to turn that back on itself so i'm going to turn it all the way back there so I've kind of got this little um, S shape or swan's neck kind of look there. Okay, so I've just brought it round to the other side. So I'm going to slide my fingers, just slide my fingers down just so that I know I'm keeping everything together and again, remove my pliers. So this is the shape that we're looking for. Now we're going to use kind of one of the biggest mandrels on the six step bailing pliers and I'm going to put that in here so you can see the small loop that we made at the very start is actually right up to the the actual mandrel at this side okay and then i'm going to bring this all the way around this side pushing that all the way down and through so now we've got that earring shape but we still don't want to let go so we want to 
hold on to everything while we take our pliers out. Okay, and now we've got this here, now we want to cut them. So just holding on to everything as neatly as we can, sort of keeping that tension between them. We'll kind of keep them nice and steady. And we want to cut this just kind of beyond the bottom of the opposite side loop. So just snipping those. And again, we don't want to let go just yet. We want to keep them identical. And then we're going to pop our pliers in around about level with that first loop and just pop that little kick back. So I'm just popping my finger in there just to support it and just that little kick back. And that is our first pair made. And those are almost ready to be worn. Well, we'll file them very briefly just before we finish. I'll just show you a little bit of filing. So that's one ready already and made. We will go through hammering again in, in, a, in a few minutes, but we're not gonna hammer every one because uh, my neighbors won't like it. Okay, so the next pair we're gonna make are these more rounded ones. So again, I'm gonna take around about the same length, about four inches. So just moving those out of the way for two seconds. Again, making sure we start off with good flush cut ends. Okay, so once they're cut, we're keeping them together, we're keeping them in tandem. And we're gonna pop in our pliers and make that loop just on the first one. So bringing this around, so on this first, when I say first one, I meant the smallest loop. So I've got my little loop in there, all ready to go. And again, we want to keep everything nice and smooth and together. So I'm just holding everything together. So that don't worry if they're ping it ping apart like that, as long as I'm holding this end, it's good. Now I'm gonna use the biggest mandrel on these pliers. I'm gonna pop these in and pop them so that they're touching the actual loop again. And then we know we're going in the right space. And we're gonna bring that all the way around and past and they're pushing those past because wire's got a memory. So you can see when I let that go there, it springs back. So we just want to encourage that and just use the warmth of our fingers just for a few seconds, just to encourage that. Now, what you'll find is if you're using these, you'll get a kind of straight a bit here because this, this middle bit here tends to be a bit smoother. So if you wanted to go in, as long as you keep them at all nicely together, go in at a different angle, just kind of try and round that up a little bit more you can do but to me it doesn't really matter because that's coming to, down towards a drop anyway so what we want to do is cut these off so I'm going to cut these off around about here just beyond that loop making sure we cut them both okay I'm going to put my pliers back in just for a few seconds and what I want to do is just make these smooth around that little bit more so we're just getting a little bit more circular and just moving this around and kind of squishing it together. Can you see what I'm doing there? So it's coming all the way together. So now it's more circular. Okay. Now, just so that we get that drop to drop away and not kind of drop underneath the we want to drop sort of more, slightly more forwards. We're going to pop in, in fact, we'll pop in our the pliers that we used originally. So I'm going to pop that through the loop. And I'm going to hold it. So can you see that? I'm kind of holding this side on that loop. So just let's get to focus on the right bit. There we go. And I'm just going to, holding everything together, I'm just going to kink it a little bit out this way, just so that that loop's kind of more coming out towards this way, okay? And now we're gonna take a look at that. We can see at the moment we're not gonna be able to get that in our ear. So we need to be able, need to snip a little bit off. Like so. So now we'll be able to hook that through our ear and pop our earrings on like so. So that, there are rounded hooks. There we go. So the next ones we're going to make uh, we'll make these ones next, so these kind of long, more dramatic ones. So I need probably a tiny bit longer, not much, of just four inches, no no shorter than four inches, definitely. And, and what we want to do is 
grab these, in fact first flush cut them, so flush cut both ends just so that you know you've got two identical lengths, okay? And what you want to do is come in around about, it's not quite a third, it's, um, so I've got about two and a half, or th yeah, about two and a half or three inches at this side, and it's probably a little bit more than four inches is this, probably about four and a half inches, about an inch and a half on this side. So I'm gonna make a bend there, and we don't wanna bend it all the way around because it'll make an extra bend on there, but as far as it'll go with your pliers, that's about right. Now this one's kind of harder to hold, so you just kind of need to hold the tension there. I've still got two pieces of wire in my hand here. Now the next thing I want to do if you don't, don't have these, you can just shape them with your hands, it's entirely up to you. But I just tend to go in with wire forming pliers and you can get a really nice shape with these. So just forming them around and it just gives you that nice arched shape. Okay, so we've got a nice shape going on there. This looks a little bit too long to me, so I'm going to trim that off. A little bit okay I'll probably trim this end off as well just a little but we'll leave that till the end so what we want to do now is we want to turn these ends and again we want to keep everything together so I'm holding it quite gently but I'm holding it nice and firmly I'm going to again use the smallest mandrel on my pliers and I'm going to turn this long piece inwards towards the back so this is going to be the back and this is this is going to be the front so at first I'm holding onto these, get, making sure they're perfectly together, right on the ends, I'm using that smallest mandrel. I'm going to just encourage these to come round. If you need to reposition, reposition them in your hand rather than trying to move anything else. So bringing that all the way around, like so. So we've got that loop on the end there. Then again, like we did in that first pair, we're going to go back to the next size up popping it right in, right up to that loop and pushing that around in the opposite direction. And that's gonna give us that gorgeous shape at the front, a little bit more of a design feature. And I'm just taking a look at this back here. They are around about the right length, but I'm just gonna snip off just a tiny bit just so I know they are spot on for the size we want. So, so we can kind of spring them in a little bit like I say, wire's got a memory. Make sure these are laying, sort of this one's trying to lay on top of each other. So just make sure they're laying in front, back and front of each other. And especially these ones will definitely need some hammering on them. So we'll do that in a few moments. So the last one we're gonna do is these, um, these little loop ones. So the ones that have got the loop on and then you add things to the loop. So once you've done this loop, you can't add anything onto it unless it's got an openable loop on the thing that you're adding onto it. So it's not an openable. Um, like a normal earring, you can open and close it. So these will not open. So we're gonna do our wrapped loop. So we're gonna work around about just uh, not quite halfway so we've got kind of this is this is kind of this would be the middle I'm just going a little bit further than that so I'm going to create an angle in there so this this is one that we do make um, not together not entirely together we can we can do this first bit together actually it doesn't have to be done together so I can pop that in there and make that same angle and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the six millimeter. You can make it any size, but we're gonna use this six millimeter part of my mandrel here. And this shorter side, so the shorter side of the, the full length, so this is the shorter side, we're gonna create a wrap loop, okay? But it's gonna be a large kind of feature wrap loop. So we're gonna come all the way around our pliers. Now, because we're doing them both together, I'm gonna to bring one over the top and one underneath okay so it's a bit harder when they're together so now i've brought that one over the top can let go and bring one underneath there okay so i've got two identical size loops and we can move this away for a few seconds now what i need to do 
is this longer piece is going to become our ear wire and we're going to retain the shape of that loop so I'm going to retain the shape of that loop by holding onto that loop and I'm holding it as close to that crossover as possible and then I'm going to start my wrapping so I'm going to wrap around three or four times or five if you can get that many wraps in so we've got that loop so that is our feature loop and then we're going to cut it. I'm going to do the same with this one. So holding on to that loop, retaining that shape and start wrapping. So I'm wrapping, so I'm keeping my fingers quite nice and close to my work, like so. So I've got five wraps on this one also. And snip. Now remember which side you've snipped up because that's going to be the back part of your earring. Now we're going to pop our pliers in right down here and you could do like I did with the ones with this, the uh, circle ones you could pop a bead on before if you wanted to but you can just go straight on with it so if you're making something that you want to pop a matching bead onto here you could pop a bead on before this point so where the back keep making sure the back is at the back our loop is flat and we're going to tilt this forwards again at this side make sure the back you can see where I've cut it, the back is here, so I can grab hold of this and tilt this forwards. So now we need to make sure that we're making them the same size, so we need to use the same mandrel. So I'm going to pop my mandrel in, I'm going to use this large one, and I've popped it in so this is as close as possible, it's right up to, so it's touching this one here, and then I'm going to push this around and all the way to the back. Okay, and then bringing it down. Okay, so I've got one side done, like so. And then again, where we've kicked it forward, we're gonna grab hold of that, making sure this is touching, everything's touching together, so that we know we're making it exactly the same size. And again, folding that around, like so. Now this is probably the hardest part of these, is cutting them so that they are the same length, but it's kind of a, a matter of grabbing them, holding them as level as you can because they won't sit perfectly together and then snipping as close as possible to the same length and again popping that little kick out at the back so a little kick out at the back people say that makes it kind of stop from falling out of your ear but I just like the shape of it, it just makes it a little bit more refined myself so we've made all our, of our earring findings, Not didn't take much time at all, all using the same wire. So if you want to work harden them, you'll need a hammer and block. So you can use, you can use a, a more traditional hammer or you can use something like a rawhide hammer that's not going to dent your metal at all. And all we do is tap, it's not, it's not hitting it. We use the weight of the hammer come down onto it so we're holding the hammer right at the end so the handles right here and we're just tapping and what that will do it was it will kind of disturb all the the molecules or you know the kind of matrix that the copper's made up of and it will kind of reform it and make it a harder metal okay so all it is is tappy 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 okay and you'll do that to all of them now the only other thing we need to consider when we're making our own um, earring findings is that we've actually got a cut end on here. So what I would suggest is taking a jewellery file or if you haven't got that an emery board will do just fine and just taking, remember a file only works in one direction. So there's no point going like this, we have to file usually away from yourself and just take a few seconds on each just to kind of round that end off it has to still go through your ear so it's you know all earrings are a little bit sharp but that's that's fine now just that little bit of filing just makes a huge amount of difference so we've got lots and lots of earring findings and just to show you very very quickly I continue to use the 0.8 wire so with these ones I've not used any head pins either so with these ones I made a wrap loop on the top 
and then wound the wire back up the beads and then wrapped it around here again. So we've continued using the same wire, no need for any findings whatsoever. These are little charms that I've made with the 0.8 wire and I've just fixed them onto that loop at the front. This is just a really classic drop, but I've used a 0.8 wire. So if we look at them together, like so, they've got a frame of wire on the outside of each. So the wires just come through and up the side and wrapped around the top. So there's no need to actually buy head pins even sometimes, because if you want everything to match, you've got everything there as long as you've got a 0.8 wire and it will go through your beads it's fine so this one all I've done was with the end I've spiraled it but I've actually hammered it so you can see you can get that nice flash so that's another design feature so thank you very very much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video uh, if you did pop me a like below also um, subscribe because I have lots and lots of videos and lots and lots of ideas um, bursting to come out so uh, yeah um, take care and I will see you again soon